Either I know a guy who screwed up and lost a quarter billion, or I know a guy who pulled off one of the greatest crimes in history. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing the untold story of the Crypto King. For this video, we're telling the tale of Gerald Cotton, CEO and founder of Quadriga CX. When he died in 2018, $190 million disappeared with him. What do you think really happened? Tell us in the comments. Early Life and Background A native of Belleville, Ontario, Canada, Gerald Cotton studied business in Toronto before moving to Vancouver. There, he joined a small group of entrepreneurs and cryptocurrency enthusiasts who called themselves the Bitcoin Co-op. Jerry kind of invited us all in, um, the whole community, and he said, you can just come here and hang out. He was described by acquaintances as a friendly guy who was, quote, always smiling. However, Cotton's intentions may not have always been as straightforward as those around him supposed. According to independent journalist Amy Castor, in 2003, when Cotton was 15 years old, he may have promoted a Ponzi scheme through the online forum Talk Gold. If so, it would have been during this time that he met his future business partner Michael Patron. Born Omar Danani, Patron was part of the identity theft ring Shadow Crew, where he helped launder money. And that he had been involved in a money laundering service for an identity theft ring called Shadow Crew. Convicted in 2005, he did 18 months in prison in California, was deported from the US to Canada, and changed his name twice. In 2008, Patron seems to have founded the company Midas Gold Exchange, which offered digital currency exchange services. It made most of its money from Liberty Reserve, a Costa Rica-based digital currency popular among criminal organizations. Cotton also seems to have been involved in Midas Gold, which listed his email as the company's contact. While the company was dissolved in 2009, its associated website, m-gold.com, remained up. In 2013, however, U.S. prosecutors shut down Liberty Reserve and seized dozens of domains, including m-gold, after an investigation into money laundering. Patron, and perhaps Cotton, needed a new business plan. Quadriga CX Just a few months after Liberty Reserve was shut down, Cotton and Patron founded Quadriga CX, a company where investors could have their purchases of Bitcoin processed. My name is Gerald Cotton, and I'm the founder of Quadriga CX. Quadriga encouraged people to invest in Bitcoin by emphasizing how simple and safe it was. The company stood out as the cheapest and fastest exchange at the time. They even set up the second Bitcoin-operated ATM in Canada. If you had an interest in Bitcoin and you were in Canada, you'd heard of Quadriga. Despite these efforts, Quadriga ran out of money in 2015, and an attempt to take the company public failed. In 2016, all the other directors besides Cotton resigned. However, business boomed in 2017 as the value of Bitcoin soared only to crash in early 2018. Bitcoin rose and rose and rose, and ultimately it crashed. Nonetheless, at its peak, Quadriga was the largest crypto-based company in Canada. There was just one problem. When the value of Bitcoin plummeted, customers wanted to withdraw their money. In just 24 hours, more than $60 billion was wiped off the value of the entire cryptocurrency market. But when visiting the company's physical office in Laval, Quebec, there was no cash or no one there at all. Jerry Cotton's death. On December 9, 2018, Cotton suddenly passed away at the age of just 30. This is a real mystery that's unfolding this morning. And it all has to do with the death of the CEO in India. Here he is here, uh, Gerald Cotton. He's the founder of Quadriga CX. Reportedly, Cotton suffered from Crohn's disease and fell ill in Jaipur, India. He was there during a trip with his wife, Jennifer Robertson, which was supposed to be a honeymoon. While in India, they had planned to sponsor an orphanage. However, in the hospital, Cotton allegedly went into septic shock and died after cardiac arrest. Twelve days earlier, he had signed a will, leaving Robertson his estate. He signed this like two weeks before he mysteriously died in India. That's odd. Only one month later did Quadriga announce Cotton's death, something that has aroused further suspicion. To come out and make a statement a month after he's dead sounds wrong. 
Unfortunately, Cotton's death left behind a complicated mess for Quadriga and its customers. Cotton had run the whole company off his encrypted laptop. After staff shrank in 2016, Cotton had sole access to the passwords and accounts. So when Cotton died, there was no way to get the money from the exchange back to investors. And then Quadriga posted a notice saying that no one knew how to get access to the cryptocurrency. His wife stated that not even she knew how to retrieve the files, as she had never been given the password or recovery key. She scoured their apartment looking for passwords to get into his laptop. Nor was there any backup plan to retrieve funds if something were to happen to Cotton. As a result, $190 million effectively disappeared, with thousands of investors locked out of their accounts. And that means $190 million of customers' holdings are locked inside and no one can access them. Unsurprisingly, this left a lot of people feeling cheated and angry. And it gets worse. Investigations. After Quadriga filed for bankruptcy in 2019, the accounting firm Ernst & Young was tasked with finding the lost money and returning it to investors. They searched several cold wallets, only to find them almost empty. Once I determined that there was no money in the cold storage, that's when I stopped believing that he was dead. During this investigation, the firm discovered that Cotton had set up fake accounts at Quadriga. We came across a series of fake accounts one of them was called Scepter Jerry. They had names like R2-D2, C-3PO, and Chris Marquet, his biggest at the company. Through them, he made roughly 300,000 trades using fake funds to purchase actual cryptocurrency from customers. Unbeknownst to them, that crypto does not exist. He also took millions of dollars from client accounts to trade recklessly on other exchanges. A report from the Ontario Securities Commission concluded that his trades resulted in a loss of $115 million, losses that he tried to cover using assets from his clients. In effect, Cotton was playing the casino with users' assets. During this time, Cotton spent an exorbitant amount of money. His purchases included four homes, 14 rental properties, a Cessna 40, and a $600,000 yacht he named Gulliver. Quadriga has also been the subject of additional investigations, including by the FBI and Royal Canadian Mounted Police. However, no one has been able to track down all the missing money. As part of a voluntary settlement resulting from the investigations, Cotton's widow, Jennifer Robertson, returned $12 million that Cotton had left her to Quadriga. Robertson claims that she didn't know about the criminal behavior at the company, describing Cotton as a loving husband and her best friend. Jennifer goes on to basically say she didn't really know anything about how the company operated. When she did ask questions, Cotton explained them away as banks being, quote, anti-Bitcoin. Robertson has since denounced her late husband's business practices and expressed interest in moving on with her life. I, I really did everything that I could to help. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Theories. Given Cotton's shady business practices and sudden death, there's been a lot of speculation. One theory is that Cotton faked his death and took off with the money. Suspicious investors have noted that on his death certificate, Cotton's name was misspelled and that his funeral was a closed casket. There have even been calls to exhume his corpse, including from lawyers who represent investors, according to the New York Times. Again, um, not sure whether there was an actual dead body in there or not. Meanwhile, Cotton's business partner, Michael Patron, has remained active in digital currency. In January 2022, he was exposed as the treasury head for popular crypto project Wonderland. The revelation forced him to step down from the role. The disappearance of Jerry Cotton and the millions of dollars that investors trusted him with continues to raise questions. In addition to investigations by U.S. and Canadian authorities, amateur internet sleuths, including some who lost money with Quadriga, have taken it upon themselves to dig deeper and find out more. It's been two years since um, Kajuga went under and 
our chances of getting all of our money back is very, very slim. Perhaps someday, these efforts will lead to closure in this bizarre story. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.